This is Halloween, and if you love haunted history and cemeteries as much as I do, you may want to subscribe because I'm going to be taking you somewhere new every week. In today's episode, we are headed out to Mobile, Alabama to enjoy some great food at the Oyster House. Then we're going to go to Mobile's beautiful historic cemetery, the Magnolia Cemetery. And we're headed over to USS Alabama Battleship Park. And there we will explore their battleship and submarine. Enjoy! We're here at the original Oyster House in Mobile, Alabama. Gonna go in and get a bite to eat. We've arrived at the Magnolia Cemetery in Mobile, Alabama, established in 1836. Let's go in and see what we can see. This cemetery is amazing. It is so beautiful. It's 120 acres of land, about 50,000 burials, and they're still entering into this cemetery as of today. I saw a lot of newer headstones as we were approaching and I was like, eh. You know, I want to see the historic section. So look at this. It's amazing. This is the Caldwell Mausoleum. I was just told by somebody passing by that we needed to check out this mausoleum over here. But look at these beautiful sculptures right here. Angels. I'm going to walk right up so I can take some, some photos. Just amazing. Evidently, you can walk right into this mosque. It is Owen Farley, and you can walk right in, this lady said, and she said it's amazing. So, I see a lock here. Oh my gosh, it is amazing. That is so cool. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like that. I don't see how you can walk in, but maybe she meant you could see in. That's just incredible. This is a beautiful cemetery. Just look how old these headstones are. This is the Jewish Rest Magnolia Cemetery. So this is uh, kind of like the small Jewish section in the middle of the cemetery here. They even have a national part of the cemetery. So all veterans. These are the back of the headstones that we're looking at now. But those thin, tall headstones from the 1800s, it's full of those. And they're taller than me. <laughs> So, it's pretty wild. It's awesome. I'm wanting to go over here and check out this mausoleum over there. Looks very interesting. I had to come up and see this mausoleum because I noticed the stained glass in the back of it. But there's literally like a mud moat 
going around the mausoleum. So I had to climb up into here. But there's not a lot of light. But you can kind of see that there's a beautiful stained glass piece in the back of the mausoleum. And there's these marble doors with the sort of iron cross there on the marble doors. And the marble doors are open. And you can just see in. There are, looks like three or four um, entrements on each side. Pretty, pretty wild. The screen is busted right here. That's why I could get in. But the stained glass is really pretty. This one here just looked so interesting. The way it looks so cryptic with the moss kind of growing out of it. And not really moss, it's uh, ferns, I think. I want to see where it's inscribed, who we're looking at here. And so far I see nothing. Let's see. There's nothing <laughs> on the outside of this one, but it was so interesting to me. I can only assume that this is a family plot it says mother, sister, father. That says Henry, but I'm not sure if that's a first or last name. Well, we'll find out right now. This says it's Shields. Edward F. Shields. So... And that says Sprague. <laughs> so I'm not really sure about this plot. This is another shield. So these might be shields as well. You can see that there are still interments happening here because there are a lot of new headstones over in that corner. The corner um, just before you enter into the cemetery there's a lot of new headstones so they have 50,000 buried here probably more than that now and uh, just a lot of history and a lot of actually really important people not like famous like you and I would know like uh, movie actors and stuff like that but a lot of politicians, government officials, people. Um, there was a very prominent black businesswoman from the 1900s buried here. So there are a lot of very important people, VIPs, buried in this cemetery. And we're losing a bit of daylight here. It's around almost five in the afternoon, early evening. And you know how it is in the winter with that time change it gets it gets late quick so it gets dark quick anyway so I'm gonna head over to this other historical part of the cemetery and take a lot more pictures I gotta say that these particular old headstones are my favorite it's they tell you everything about how they died how old they were this is in memory of George it looks like till Tillip, son of Dr. George and Elizabeth S. Morton of Orange County. Oh, Philip. Okay, that makes sense. So, in memory of George Philip, son of Dr. George and Elizabeth S. Morton of Orange County, Virginia, who died March, it looks like March 7th, 1846, after a short illness, aged 15 years and 10 months. I just love that it tells you the whole story behind the person. This was a young man that passed away and it tells you exactly how he passed. It even says erected by a bereaved relative. 
So, I mean, that is so awesome. You, you know, he was 15 years old and 10 months. 15 and 10 months. So, that's just really cool. I just love those. Leaves, you know, because sometimes you see a young man who passed away, a young, young woman, and you just want to know, how did they die? They were so young. And that just tells you, he had a brief illness. Now, we don't know what the illness was. Could have been anything back then. The 1800s, like I said, we didn't have the medicine we have today. But it's still kind of cool to know. Look at this beautiful mausoleum here. Can't see inside of it. Just says family tomb. Family tomb, PV Pomeroy. Very pretty. This Pomeroy family mausoleum, it is one of two cast iron over brick mausoleums. And it says it's a neoclassical design with a robed woman in mourning at the top. It's pretty amazing. It just looks different, you know? So it's cast iron over brick. wanted to walk with you so you can see how beautiful this is you can see downtown mobile right there in the background with this perfect sunset as i was looking up the history of this cemetery there are very important people buried here but the significance of the style in which they are entombed is almost as significant as the person themselves. There are a lot of very unique tombstones and mausoleums here. Some of the first by design and like we just saw the Pomeroy mausoleum, one of two. So it's very known for its unique designs of the headstones. Look at this one. T-A-R-D-D, -D, Tard. Family here. It says Henry D. Van Cleek. And this one says Alexis Tardy Jr. Then we have a Reed and a Springer and an Austin buried here as well. Kind of makes me wonder about the whole surname thing. <coughs> Back in the day, it seemed like sometimes you took the mother's surname and sometimes the father's. I don't know about that. I have to look into it, but just look at how much there is to see here. And there's such a beautiful sunset going on right now. I just might be in the dark very, very soon. <laughs> this looks like the iron over brick again. So maybe they're both in this same cemetery. Cause this looks very much like the last one, the Pomeroy's. It's the very same, it says family tomb, but this is the Hope 
H. Slatter. Uh, plot has the same image of the woman mourning at the top, but this one is fenced in with a beautiful wrought iron gate. Just really awesome. I see my husband over there looking for me. <laughs> he was talking to his mom on the phone and like left me be and I escaped, man. I just started walking all over the place. He's kind of making a circle. You're gonna wanna give yourself a couple of hours in this cemetery because I stupidly thought an hour, hour would be enough and it just isn't. You know, there's so much to see here. 120 acres of land and I haven't even scratched the surface um, Also, I had done another cemetery earlier in the day and my equipment was dying so I had to stop for a bit and Charge my equipment, but just look at that sunset Over this beautiful cemetery. It's just gorgeous There's literally <laughs> a moat going around most of these uh, plots. It's dug out like a almost like a little gutter so that when it floods here, because it is Alabama, so when it floods, you know, the water will go in there and hopefully won't interfere with any of the burials. Chariot awaits. I didn't get to spend as long in this cemetery as I would have liked to. I think I underestimated the size of it a little bit, but it's gorgeous. Highly recommended. And I'll see you at the next one.
we were leaving the SS Drum submarine and headed for the battleship, I noticed this sort of capsule. It kind of looked, it, it didn't look like a, a submarine at all to me. What you would think that a submarine would look like, you know, the yellow submarine from the Beatles. <laughs> you know, fins on it and everything. It just looked like a straight capsule. Had a couple of uh, windows at the top. And that was it, very basic, but it caught my attention. And as we walked over to it, it was called the H.L. Hunley. That really captured me because I had read about H.L. Hunley and a cenotaph being erected at the local historic cemetery the magnolia cemetery where we visited and so i was like wow that's crazy this is the submarine but even more fascinating is the history of this submarine the hl hunley was built in mobile alabama and first launched in july of 1863 then shipped by rail august 1863 over to the charleston harbor the hl hunley was also known as the fish boat the torpedo boat or the porpoise and in 1863 during a test run on the 29th of august five crewmen boarded the submarine and never returned to the surface it ended up sinking so these first five passengers died in a test run and then they decided, let's bring her back up for another venture. So they thought maybe five crewmen weren't enough. So next time it launched for service would be October 15th, 1863. So we're talking about just a couple months later. They send out eight crewmen and figuring this will work. Now this was a manually operated submarine and they never resurface either. So it was brought back up once again for service and launched for its final time on February 17th, 1864. This time, the submarine was successful in being the first submarine to sink a warship. The warship was called the Housatonic and they sunk that warship during the American Civil War. This was a 1240 ton vessel that they were successful in sinking. However, after the attack, the crew members sank once again never to return to the surface. But reading further into it, I just cannot fathom. Why on earth, after two failed attempts, would you send eight more servicemen down to lose their lives? And you have to know that these men were probably horrified at the notion, but they were in the service and they were just fulfilling their duties as active servicemen. But myself, I know that if it were me and I was in the service and I knew the history, the sh very short history, of this submarine, I would have been terrified. And it being a manually operated submarine, that makes it even worse. Because you're down there and you're just working real hard, you know. What if, you know, buddy guy next to you ain't working as hard as you are and you're just busting tail doing this, operating this machine, knowing you're gonna die, like there's really no point. That in my opinion is, is heroism, that is heroic, that is brave. That is fearless, and that is the definition of countrymen who really loved their country. Because they knew when they got on that submarine that there was a very good chance that they were not going to return. So above, I've shown you some pictures of the actual submarine and the replica of the one we saw when we were in Mobile, Alabama at the park. And I just, you can just see, I just can't even imagine being in that tight, closed space, knowing I was going to probably die, it really gives a new perspective of signing on that dotted line and just not knowing your fate when you join the military. You have to really have a love of country to be able to do that. And I have a whole new respect for anyone who has served. And that's just the story of the H.L. Hunley. Who knows how many more stories there are like that, where they've made an aircraft or some sort of ship or vessel and they've sent it out on a maiden voyage and then didn't work out so they put more men on there you know i don't know how many cases there are like this it was the 1800s we hadn't come so far as uh technology and all of that so i don't really know the actual ship rested beneath the surface of the water there in the estuary that is charleston harbor which connects the Ashley, Cooper, and Wando rivers 
After 150 years of searching for this ship, it rested just 30 feet below the surface of the water in the harbor there. And it was only four miles from the harbor. It's pretty incredible. It kind of was just right there for so long. When they retrieved the ship, all of the bodies of the crewmen that passed in the ship were preserved in sediment, but nothing but bone and fragments of clothing. Their bodies were resumed and laid to rest in the Magnolia Cemetery with a huge procession that included one and a half miles of reenactors that came out for the service. So that's pretty incredible. It really blew my mind. H.L. Hunley had even lost his own life in the second voyage, and he wasn't even a serviceman. He was just kind of the creator of the submarine. So that's why I was named for him. But he wasn't a serviceman, but he lost his life as well in the second voyage. If you want to go and visit the replica, it is located at the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park. And there is a replica on display. You can't see the inside of the ship, but you can definitely see what it would have looked like in its heyday. And then the actual H.L. Hunley submarine is restored as much as possible and on display for view at Charleston's Warren Lash Conservation Center, which I definitely want to go see the real thing. Now I've kind of delved deep into the rabbit hole of this submarine because I just find it so fascinating, especially just why on earth you would use servicemen for experimental purposes. But I don't think it's the first time, and it's probably not going to be the last time. It's probably happened many times over the years. Someone has to try it out for the first time, you know. That's all I wanted to tell you. I wanted to give you a little history on the H.L. Hunley submarine. I took some photos of the rest of the battleship. Enjoy! Thank you so much for joining me again today. We really loved our stay in Mobile, Alabama. It's actually my birthplace. If you were born somewhere else and you actually lived most of your life in another state, I would recommend any time going and visiting your birthplace because it was really surreal. It was a really cool experience. I really am looking forward to going back one day. We just had one day to spend there, but it was it was great. We really had a great time. They have some really good seafood there right on the water. And also we visited a really great brewery. So if you are going to Mobile, Alabama and you enjoy craft breweries, check out Iron Hand Brewing Company. They were super hospitable and it was a really kind of neat environment. They were set up in an old Baptist church 
The food was great. The beers were really good. So you might want to check that out. Also, if the locals are telling you to check out Fairhope, which is actually a really beautiful little historic town, I would recommend going during the day. We went at night and the bars were kind of cold and uninviting. It was very clicky and like we didn't really have a good time. By the time we got there, it was, it was about 7.30 at night when we went. And all the shops were closed. So unfortunately, we didn't get to see any of the shops. They have a bunch of cute little shops. But I would recommend if you're going to go to Fairhope, like the locals are telling you to do, check it out during the day so the shops are still open. And if you just want to have a beer and bounce, then it's perfect. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video. And I'll see you next time.